What's going on inside China? So it hasn't really hammered the Australian economy. There's good reason to believe that the Chinese economy is in serious trouble. If you're an Australian and you're looking ahead, um, you would take that as a, as a warning sign. And then communists are opaque because they're communists. So you put a communist party on a, on a Chinese society, it's a little bit hard to, to, to understand. When you destroy wealth in Chinese stocks, whose wealth is it? Well, it's either the oligarchs or Western investors. The point is, um, the wealth belongs to uh, either Chinese oligarchs or Western investors. Now, do, do, does the Communist Party of China care about oligarchs? No, they want to squash them. They're, they're worried about them. They don't care if they destroy that wealth. Do you think they care about Western investors? No, they would love to destroy the wealth because who's getting hurt? Your, your political rivals. What's being strengthened? Communist Party of China. Okay, let's talk about our friends in China. Um, uh, and Australia and China are joined at the hip. They're, I know they're, they have a spat going on, a trade spat. And uh, I, again, I applaud Australia's uh, bravery and forthrightness in calling for uh, getting to the bottom of the, the where the virus came from. My own view is, I think there's plenty of evidence that came from the Wuhan lab. lab. But uh, Australia hasn't concluded that. They've said, we ought to have a thorough independent investigation. I think that's right. And so they've been sort of smacked down to, uh, by China and Australia has, has stood up very well. well. Imports from Australia. Australia sold more coal to China than ever before because China needs it and Australia is a great, great source. So, so it hasn't really hammered the Australian economy, but there's good reason to believe that the Chinese economy is in serious trouble. And if you're an Australian and you're looking ahead, um, you would take that as a, as a warning sign. Uh, and just to, to put a final point on that, uh, what's going on inside China? And it's China's always opaque. I mean, the Chinese culture is different from Western culture. And so you need to know a lot of Chinese history and um, you know religion and philosophy and uh, the mandate of heaven. There's, there's a lot to know about China just to even begin to understand it. Um, and then communists are opaque because they're communists. So you put a communist party on a, on a Chinese society, it's a little bit hard to, to, to understand. Um, but some people have some insights in Europe. I believe Kevin Rudd is a former prime minister. Am I correct about that? He seems to be the leading advocate for you know better relations with China, I'll put it that way. Uh, but he, he made a very, some very interesting comments in an interview yesterday, your time, um, uh, and looking at what Xi Jinping is doing right now. Look, there's no denying the strength in the Australian economy. You got a property boom, your stock market is up. Um, the uh, to the point that the Reserve Bank of Australia is, is, will see fit to taper as the, soon, you know, fairly soon. I think they've extended uh, the start date for the taper, but they're still they still say they're committed to that. Unemployment's going down, um, so there are a lot of good metrics coming out of Australia. Um, and for that matter, uh, even though China has declared a kind of trade war on Australia. Australian wine. We're getting very good prices on Australian wine here in the U.S. and it's great wine. <laughs> you got to sell. You got to sell it to somebody. Uh, but um, but China just set a record for coal imports from Australia. Australia sold more coal to China than ever before, and because China needs it, and Australia is a great great source. And some of this stuff gets big headlines. I'll come back to Evergrande in a second, but some of it gets big headlines. You know, they they just hammered. Didi. Didi was the, the Uber of China, you know, the, the ride hailing company. They did a very successful IPO on the New York Stock Exchange, but they didn't get certain permissions and the Chinese security agencies, uh, not, not securities in the sense of stocks and bonds, but the internal security and you know, the spies, in other words. They had serious concerns, national security concerns about the information you could get on the uh, DD app about locations and whereabouts, et cetera. Uh, that was never resolved before the IPO. They went straight for it. So they've been slapped down. Um, they've been, uh, their, their uh, applications have been amended. They've been threatened with the possibility that they may be forced to delist from the New York Stock Exchange and maybe relist or not on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, but not just Didi, uh, Alibaba, where's Jack Ma? I call him Jack in the Box. I mean, I, I feel sorry for him. He's obviously under some kind of house arrest. He's, he's hidden. Uh, so we haven't seen or heard much of Jack Ma or almost nothing. When you destroy wealth in Chinese stocks, whose wealth is it? Well, it's either the oligarchs or Western investors. 
you know, because BlackRock is busy stuffing all these Chinese companies into mutual funds and index funds and selling them to retail investors by the hundreds of billions of dollars. Um, or people are buying Walt Disney, which is, you know, a wholly owned subsidiary of the Communist Party of China. So the point is, um, the wealth belongs to uh, either Chinese oligarchs or Western investors. Now, do, do, does the Communist Party of China care about oligarchs? No, they want to squash them. They're, they're worried about them. If you, if you, you know, Jack Ma's problem was it was more popular than Xi Jinping, and they become rival power centers. So they don't care if they destroy that wealth. Do you think they care about Western investors? No, they would love to destroy the wealth because who's getting hurt? Your, your political rivals. What's being strengthened? Communist Party of China. So whereas there's an alignment of interest between government and Wall Street in the United States, or you know, the same thing in Australia, there's a complete, uh, there's a completely adversarial relationship between the Communist Party of China and both Wall Street and the oligarchs. So are they destroying wealth? Yeah, and they, they don't care because they're hurting their enemies as far as they're concerned and they're strengthening the party. This company has its tentacles everywhere. It has who knows how many thousands of counterparties, suppliers, lenders, investors. How many uh, wealth management products have been sold to retail investors in uh, China where the banks took the money and turned around and bought Evergrande because uh, it had a higher, higher yield? A plenty of indication that China is slowing down uh, now, now let's turn to Evergrande. So Evergrande is the largest property lending, uh, property development company in China. And it's got its tentacles everywhere, all kinds of subsidiaries and affiliates and uh, other interests, et cetera. It's a huge company. It would be, it would be as if you combined, uh, you know, in our, you know, Fannie Mae, or the, you know, the, the, the government mortgage agencies in the United States, you know, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac combined with, uh, you know, maybe Amazon, that would, that would be what, what Evergrande is, a huge company. Um, it's, uh, my view, insolvent. It's heading for bankruptcy. Um, people kind of know that. You're like, yeah, big deal, Jim. Everyone can see that one coming. Uh, the bonds recently were trading at 40 cents. I'm like, what are they thinking? And of course, they went down to now around 20 cents or 10 cents. Maybe there's a little salvage value there once you wipe out equity. That much is known, okay? And it's kind of priced in, not completely, but priced in. And the Chinese government has the resources to take over this company and they'll decide who wins and loses. Do you want to whack the stockholders? Do you want to bail out the bondholders? That, those will all be political slash economic decisions. And the government has the resources to do that. And a lot of people are underplaying what's really going on there. But here's, but here's where most people don't see the problem and where the communists definitely do not see the problem. If you're an Australian and you're looking ahead, um, you would take that as a, as a warning sign. China just set a record for coal imports from Australia. There's a completely adversarial relationship between the Communist Party of China and both Wall Street and the oligarchs. A plenty of indication that China is slowing down. Uh, now, now let's turn to Evergrande.